Good morning, Warriors. So, I uh, ran out of battery last night, so I didn't get to take any video. Uh, but, I mean, what is there to really see? I threw the, the seat back in the old Focus and popped a pillow up and down I went. Slept like a little baby and got to wake up to this this morning. Hard to beat it. All right, I think we're headed on into Leody. We better get our directions. Should be about 15 minutes out. Twenty minutes. Not bad. All right, like I said, uh, I didn't intend to sleep wild last night. It just kind of turned out to be fun uh, because I was having so much fun at the mountain bike park there in Colorado. So anyway, when I was young and dumb and hungry and ready to roll, I spent a lot of nights like that so that I could go to clinics or do any other thing that I wanted to do so sometimes you just got to ask yourself instead of uh, why you can't go to a clinic or a contest uh, sometimes it's better to ask yourself just how hungry are you anyway all right we'll see you at the live, the live feed so a horse has in the hind end so have you ever had been shoeing and all of a sudden that horse just shoves his foot right down the ground like your toe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You think, you sucker. I'm going to beat you to death. And you probably did. That made you feel better. <laughs> so what happened is, is you let that foot go get straight. So the horse is designed behind it. One joint bends. They all have to bend before they all have to straighten together. Right? So they got two structures in here that do that. One that runs from here to here. Tensor fascia lata. And then one called the Peronis tertius. So that's why that's designed. So when one joint either bends or straightens, the whole limb has to. So you said I allow him to go straight. Yeah, so that's this right. is the biggest one right here. This is what happens to a lot of people. They pull this foot out here, and they're out here flopping around, and then this gets left straight, and as soon as you push that forward, he's already leaning towards me, there he goes. Right. Right? So shoeing horses behind, understanding how the hind end works, and also too, one of my favorites is flare, the word flare. And uh, it's like, the horses really like grow flare. The bigger the horses grow flare. Max, I know you're a public speaker, let's hear it. <laughs> so a horse's foot doesn't just throw 30% of the fall all of a sudden somewhere and it's flare. Right? So the foot has to distort. And they had just concrete. Mm -hmm. And there was no compaction. You want a torch? I'm good. So when he comes, after they gave it to me, they didn't want to take the horse down. They just gave it to my grandkids. All these problems changed when they got to my house. Yep. So kind of environment. Environment changed everything. So the biggest part of his life is being in mass. Yeah, a horse is designed to bear weight in the soul. We talked a little bit about that the other day, like why, why, like why do you guys think a horse has a solar arch and feet are round and why do you guys think the coronary band is, has an arch to it? I'm sorry. I got a <laughs> <laughs> 
showing that guy to people? I'm trying to understand. <laughs> so if you guys start looking at how all the anatomy we just talked about is designed, the more arch we can have in something, the stronger it is. Right? So you look at buildings, you know, like everything has an arch to it, makes it strong, bridges, things like that. So feet are no different. So that's a great analogy right there. You're standing on hard concrete all the time, nothing pushing on his frog or his soul, so it prolapse out. Abscessing gets sore. So our whole job is to pull everything back to the center. If you create good solar depth, I was at a, a contest in Kentucky. 2010 and Shane Carter said something there it took me years later to remember or to understand it He said the best shoeing job looks really long from the bottom and really short from the top It's about as basic as you can get but you can't have that unless you have good solar arch Good soul depth Right if you guys have length of foot or depth just imagine how much more you can do for a horse that prolapsed out That's why shoeing laminitic horses is so frustrating Because you don't get that opportunity You've got to create that opportunity with different packages and things like that, right? So. So one thing you see a lot with people is they never dress the back half of the foot. So when you guys, if we were to cut this horse's foot in half right here, you would see that it's from the widest part back, this is mostly all sensitive structure, and this would be rigid, up where P3 is. And then dressing feet, we're taught from a young age to stay outside of, from in front of a horse, right? I don't know if you guys have ever had a whip into a split range, but it's no fun. And uh, that was one of the worst ones I got. So, so I got ran over. So I got ran over and a whipping. It was a really great day. And uh, so if you watch how I work right here, my hand comes below the foot, right? My left hand. And then a lot of people turn around here and do this. So now my left hand never goes below the foot. So you end up dubbing all of this and creating flare on this side. So whatever you do to one half, start from the pointy heel, just like I shaped that shoe. I dressed right up, this quarter is gone, skipped right over it. Dressed right up to the front. Turn right around, start at the heel. Right around to the front. So if you do the same thing to both sides, both sides will be the same. Right? So you get a little bit of uniformity there. So talking about uniformity, something we try to talk about a lot is uh, the shape of feet and the shape of coffin bones. I know I've been to a lot of really good clinicians and people that talk about symmetry and you want to create symmetry at the bottom of a foot. So I, nothing about this horse is symmetrical. Not from the time he's born and he's real base narrow toed out all the way through the end of his life when he's bow legged and toed in. Right? Nothing about it. So I always tell everybody just look down at your shoes. Like that, put your hands like this. What do you guys see? What's the farthest point forward? Medial toe. Right, if you guys have worn out shoes, just step back, look at what side of your heel's worn out. Outside heel, and then what part of your sole's worn out in the front? Inside toe. That's the first thing that hits as we go, and it diagonally comes through, and then leaves like that. Right, you guys ever notice trimming that the sole plane and the medial toe is usually a lot less than the lateral? Right? The horse stands on it from about mid-stride all the way to leaving. That's where it stands on it and leaves. So when you create fullness, especially on a horse like this, older horse, if I was to fit this thing full on the outside, I'm going to make his life miserable. Right? But even a young horse, they're all the shape the same. We probably see to what, maybe at the shoot trimming yearlings, 14 months, you could really start to see a change. As they start getting a little bit of mass to them, and change, then you really can see the shape of those feet change, mm -hmm. right? And they'll nip and you'll see that inside, outside. So, um, just a shoe is shaped up, it's gonna be a little small.
So like this, this is that shoe, just a regular front I shaped up this morning. All I got to do is just open it, nail it on there, right? Because it has all the things that we just talked about. You guys pass this around. This side of the toe is higher than that side. From the toenail the widest part, if you flip that over, matches here. Toenail the widest part, flip it over, matches there. Toenails go through the heels. So if you have this in all your shoes before you walk to the horse, and you have the widest point and the pointy heel measured, how could you not fit?
TV. Oh, well, that well, it doesn't support Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah, like there's some weird over. Maybe it's not Netflix. It might Is I don't want length to heal so that when he's coming into the ground that he pivots off that before he hits. I want those to hit as close to the same as possible. So take that off perpendicular to the center line so that those become the same length. But the right front, I want my inside to be longer. So I box this way back. So I want the inside one to be longer than the outside because the horse is rotated out. So the longer my inside is, the more those are going to hit more the same and not pivot off the outside one. Does that make sense to everybody? And so this, worse than yeah, he's already. yeah, cranking them around every time, yeah. So like uh, the boxing at the vice or in the grinder, this part of, of shoeing is just as important as anything else that you do, right? Knowing what you could do over there with how much I take off where, where I take it, narrowing it up, like safing a shoe up so that this doesn't happen, right, on every one, right. things like that. Boxing where I fit full. So like when you look at this boxing, this should have the most, and that should have the most. That should have the least, and that should have the least, especially on this one. So everything, again, is just a complement of confirmation. So I have a big wide box and a big wide box. Hardly any, hardly any, because of how I fit. Right? So just another aspect of horseshoeing every day. You can do it with your hammer. I do it all every day, you know, box out with a hammer. You know, but you got cool tools. Use them. Hey, Dusty, real quick. So that one you put the roll all the way, the side bony type one? Yep. So this is kind of an important thing to know about Conford shoes. Um, you know, why wouldn't you put all that in with the hammer? What's oh, it going to do to... Just, well, if you hammer it wrong, it will make the nails too coarse to nail up, right? Yeah. So I should have said something while ago. So when you, when you come in, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was hammering up. Right, so that I wasn't peeling material down, I was just moving it up like this. So, or you can grind it in because they're actually punched down the middle like they should be, right? So you can nail it up and fit a round feet. That's the most important thing about what kind of shoes that you guys decide to use every day is, is the right section makes such a difference in the nail holes being in the right spot. So that you can actually, what you fit and dress to, and what you fit around, you can still have them nailed in the right spot because of where the shoe's punched. And then uh, like we said earlier, that having the thickness of these, enables you to do all this stuff. So if I just had a, uh, a quarter inch shoe, then there's, it would have been a complete waste of time to take all that off, right? But the fact that, that's why I like thicker shoes, because now I can really affect what ha where I put the bearing surface, ground and the foot. Anybody follow me on that? Yeah. Super. This is the cutest driving I've ever done. Jason made me a hammer a couple years ago, and it's sweet because I can make draft shoes with it, striking. <laughs> <laughs> All purpose. It really is. I can train with it. Switch on the hammer.
GoPro stop video.